Let me demonstrate how we can restore this unexposed raw file using a little bit of Lightroom editing. And as always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So why didn't I shoot an HDR in this case? I want to answer this question right away. I wanted to capture this as a long exposure to have nice smooth water. Unfortunately, long exposure coupled with HDR is something that usually is not working, especially with leaves moving around in the wind and the clouds in the back. So I want to try save this single raw file using some Lightroom editing. And we're going to start this in the basic panel. One of the most important things to do is to change the profile. Since Adobe Color is not a flat profile, we will already have a little bit of contrast added on top of our raw file. And that's not what we want. Instead, let's open up the profiles and choose Adobe Neutral. This is a much more flat profile and thus we have less contrast in the image, which helps save details in the brightest highlights, but it also helps to save details in the darkest shadows. Then right away, we could play around with the white balance a little bit, making the shot slightly warmer by bringing up the temperature. After all, we're working with a sunset shot and it's supposed to be a bit warmer. So right around here looks good. I still have a little bit of blue tint in the top area of the sky, which I really like. And I do think we can bring down the tint very, very slightly just to prevent those heavy purple color tones in the sky as well. And then let's work on the exposure. So the problem here is the very dark tree in the foreground. And we kind of want to fix that without affecting the highlights in the distance too much. My approach here is to first bring up the exposure very, very gently, just a little bit to kind of tickle out details from here. We cannot really increase the exposure too much because that would blow out the highlights to a point where we can not fix them. So let me just go with something like this. And to further work on the darkest parts, we can make use of the shadows and the blacks slider. So I'm gonna bring up the shadows quite a bit. And you can see how this already reveals a lot more detail in that tree. That's looking pretty good. Let's also raise the blacks to further improve the visibility of those details. Of course, by raising the blacks this much, we are losing a lot of contrast, but this has a positive effect as well, because this will add a dreamy look. And I think for scenes like this, a dreamy look added on top looks quite nice. So as you can see, with just a little bit of editing in the basic panel, we have restored the exposure quite nicely. We can take a look at before and you can see it's looking completely different now. The problem is we are now missing some colors in the sky. That's due to the profile we are using, but don't worry about that. Now, I do wanna bring down the highlights just a little bit. We will not be able to resolve that very bright spot in the center, but we can tone down the overexposure overall just a little bit. Okay, then we could play around with a bit of contrast, just giving this image some punch. And I do want to introduce some texture, making the image sharper, add a bit of clarity, which will affect the midtones, and it will also give the image a cleaner look. And for the same effect, I'm gonna bring up the dehaze just a bit. This also adds some really nice contrast. Okay, now on to the colors. We can use some vibrance and saturation to bring back colors. So let's pump up the vibrance and the saturation. Beautiful. And that's the image after a bunch of basic adjustments. Again, let's compare to before and you can see the shadows are much, much better at this point. Now we want to focus a little more on a few local areas. That means we are going to use masks to target these areas. Uh, let's go open up the masking panel and what do I want to do first? I think I want to target the tree. I'm going to use the object selection mask. Important, instead of the brush mode, select the rectangle select tool. Click on this icon right here and now I can drag up a box around the tree and Lightroom will hopefully nicely select the area. This is looking pretty good. I do want to modify this mask slightly, subtracting a brush just getting rid of that bottom part right here. 
Okay, now let's make this tree a little brighter by bringing up the exposure very gently again. We don't want to make it too bright because this would look weird as the light is coming from behind the tree. So it doesn't really make sense to make the backside that bright. Okay, I can also introduce some whites, but again, not too much. Let's go with something like this. I do think I want to add one more mask for the tree. Let's create a brush mask. And I'm just roughly brushing over the center of that big tree trunk. I don't want to affect this thing on the left, just the middle part. And again, I want to slightly bring up the exposure. Just getting out some more details. I'm also going to slightly bring up the shadows and some whites. Okay, and we could bring up the temperature to counter that blue color cast in that tree. Wonderful. So these two masks might be hard to notice due to the YouTube compression. So let me deactivate the masks for a moment. So that's the image before. And here is the image after these two masks. Much, much better. Let's continue. I want to use a linear gradient targeting the water in the foreground. Let's say like this, mainly the darkest parts right here. And I'm going to subtract using the objects mask and I'm just drawing the box around the tree again because I only want to affect the water, not the tree. And then let's bring up the texture a lot. And let's also add clarity. And what this does is these two adjustments will make those white lines of the waves just a bit more visible, giving the image more structure right here in the foreground, which I think looks great. Now I want to add some glow to the highlights. I'm going to use a radial gradient for that and I'm going to make it really, really thin and wide, just like this. And let's place the center over the brightest spots on the image. And here I'm making sure the radial gradient is slightly overlapping that tree here because this will just make this glow effect look a bit better in my opinion. To add the glow, I'm going to bring up the blacks just around here. And I even want to increase the whites. This will lead to more overexposure, but I think increasing the contrast by increasing the whites this way gives us a very good looking effect on top of this bright spot in the distance. I also want to introduce some colors in this area. So I'm going to click on this little box and I want to choose an orange color tone right around here. And let's work on the saturation as well. I think I want to bring it down slightly, but this is just to add some more warmth to the bright part of this image. Okay, looking good. We can enhance the glow some more using another radial gradient. I'm not going to make it as big as before, but again, I'm placing the center over the bright spot. And again, I want to bring up the blacks slightly. I'm also going to introduce some more whites, making this spot brighter. And let's increase the temperature for more warmth. And we can bring up the saturation to make the colors more visible in here. Wonderful. I'm still not quite happy with the center. So let me try something. I want to use a big fat radial gradient covering pretty much all of it like this. And I want to subtract with the objects mask. And I'm again, just going to select a tree because I want to affect everything behind the tree. We will target those leaves, but I don't think I can mask them out properly. Now I also want to subtract a luminance range mask and I want to filter out the brightest parts right here. I think we need to further adjust the luminance range to really only filter out the brightest areas. So just like this. What I want to do in here is to make it slightly brighter. So I'm going to bring up the whites. I'm going to bring up the shadows and I'm going to introduce some more contrast. So with this mask, I just try to make the center of the image a little more brighter and a little more appealing. So we kind of try to get the viewer's eye more towards the center of the image. But I think this looks great. It's a very subtle change. Hopefully you can spot it in the YouTube video. Now let's further work on the sky. I'm going to use a color range mask and I can just click somewhere in the blue part and you can see how this nicely selects all of the sky, which we want to target. Now I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and I take away a part from the bottom since we only want to target the sky. And here, let's bring up the contrast, giving the clouds some more punch. 
I'm also going to bring down the temperature to give this guy more of a cold color tone up here, which I think looks great. And I also want to bring down the tint to kind of get rid of that purple color cast. All right. I want to use another color range mask. So again, I'm going to click somewhere in the blue area. And again, I'm using subject linear gradient. This time I'm only leaving in a very tiny part on the top of the image like this. And I want to kind of add a vignetting effect by bringing down the, the exposure, making the very top of the image darker. So this is looking pretty good. I do think I want to make the center of the image brighter. So let me use another radial gradient covering pretty much the whole image in the center. And I want to slightly bring up the exposure. I also want to slightly bring up the contrast. And we can try to minimize overexposure by carefully bringing down the highlights. Okay, I think that looks great. Now, one more thing I want to do. Let's create a, another radial gradient. And I'm just covering those brightest parts in the center again. This time, I want to invert that radial gradient. So basically, everything except that bright spot will be selected. And now I'm going to bring up the contrast. And I'm going to bring up the whites. This will make the whole image brighter without making the overexposed areas even more overexposed. So by doing this, we are adding more punch to the image. And this is looking really, really good. Now, let me show you the comparison before the masking with just a bunch of basic adjustments and with the masking applied. Now the image has some very nice contrast going on. The colors do look much, much better. And we even have a little bit of glow in the center. So what we can do now is a little bit of color grading. That means we are heading out of the masking panel and we want to jump into the color mixer. First, I want to work on the hue. There are two sliders I want to adjust and that's blue and purple. Because right now in the sky, there is a very slight purple color cast in these blue color tones, which we want to reduce. So that's the reason for me to bring down the purple hue very, very carefully. And I also want to bring down the blue hue. And doing this, we will just get a much richer blue color tone without mixed in purple color tones. Then we can head over into the saturation tab. And one thing that's bothering me in this case is this yellow line. I think this yellow tone is way too much. So what I'm going to do is to bring down the yellow saturation getting rid of that yellow color tone in here. Wonderful. I do think I also want to slightly bring down the orange saturation. And instead, I want to bring up the red tones very, very gently, which will mostly affect the colors in the water. And I do want to bring down the green saturation because those leaves are a little too vibrant for my taste. Okay. And then let's bring up blue. And let's also bring up the purple tones just for the colder parts of the sky. Now the color mixer might not have the biggest impact on the image. Let's compare to before. This is the image without the color mixer adjustments. And here we have the color mixer adjustments applied. Again, tiny, tiny changes. So what we can do next is some split toning in the color grading tab. And I want to start with the highlights, which we want to make warmer. So I'm going to set up the hue to a warm color tone. Somewhere around here looks good. And let's bring up the saturation. And I want to raise it quite a bit because I like this, the effect this has on the image. So let's go with something like this. I also want to head into the midtones and also apply a warm color tone to them. So again, let's set up the hue. And I only want to bring up the saturation slightly to not overdo this effect because that would look super weird very fast. So let's just use low amounts here. And I also want to add into the shadows. Here we can add a little bit of color contrast by introducing a cold color tone to the shadows specifically. So let's set up the hue right around here and bring up the saturation just a little bit again. That's enough. Wonderful. Finally, we can head down into the calibration tab. And what I'm doing here is to just bring up the saturation of all three of those color tones. And let's maybe bring down the blue primary hue just a little bit. 
like this. All right, this looks great. Let's also do some sharpening in the details tab. And I'm always applying the same settings for every image. I'm bringing down the radius all the way. I'm increasing the details all the way up. I'm holding down the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. So I know where the sharpening will be applied. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And that's the image after the Lightroom adjustments. Now we can also clean up the shot real quick. I'm going to click on remove and we want to and we want to use the remove tool right here because we can now make use of generative AI to fill the areas. And of course I need to deactivate visualize spots. So what do we want to remove? First, we want to get rid of that thing looking into the image right here. I also want to get rid of this down here because it's a little distracting. And there is a tiny thing in this in the distance in the water which I want to remove. So like this. Let's see what Lightroom will do to this. Okay, this looks pretty good. There is still a sensor spot left which I want to remove real quick as well. And we are done. So that's how I'm restoring these unexposed long exposure raw files using a little bit of Lightroom. If you want to add anything or have any questions left, feel free to write in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.